Lauren James was the kind of girl who turned heads, 26 years old with a gorgeous face and a great figure. But she was convinced she could look even better with a little help from the doctor's knife. It was a deadly mistake. Cosmetic surgery has become so commonplace that people forget that it comes with risks, just like any other operation. You just don't hear about the times when things go horribly wrong. I should caution you that what you're about to see shows that increasing your cup size or smoothing out your thighs can be terribly disfiguring, but it can also be so much worse. Oh, that's a nice picture. <laughs> she is. 26-year-old Melbourne girl Lauren James. Beautiful, fun-loving, but tragically no longer here. I wish you could have seen that sound, because she... Uh, no, she told she, me about it. Mm. It was good times. For Lauren's boyfriend, Simon Dalzotto, and her parents, Catherine and Collie, snatches of home video and treasured photos show a young woman who seems flawless. What a smile she had. I miss her so much. But Lauren couldn't see what the rest of the world could, and so three years ago decided to have liposuction. Why would someone like Lauren, who, who looked to be so perfect, even consider having cosmetic surgery? You know, I've asked myself that a million times and, uh, uh, you know, I think everyone has some sort of insecurity. You know, I guess for Lauren it was her bum and her thighs. So I, I think it was, you know, she, for whatever reason, felt like she needed to um, look better, but I thought she was perfect. <laughs> You're not damaging the ligament by doing that? No, I, because like four or five times this week I, I operated exactly in this <laughs> area. Just, a, just doesn't look that gentle. <laughs> so. To get in. But then when you think about it, I made only a dot of an incision. Liposuction is the vacuuming of excess fat, and as plastic surgeon Daryl Hodgkinson is happy to show, can be done from various parts of the body, including the neck. I would say the biggest problem people could get into with this procedure would be to trivialise it and say you could do it under local anaesthetic. Do people try to do that? They do. It may be one of the most popular cosmetic procedures of the last 30 years, and today's only takes 45 minutes, but liposuction is still a complicated and major surgery. Yes, they require a, a tremendous amount of um, prior understanding about tissues and anatomy, a real, it's, it's real surgery. Did she have any idea how serious a procedure it was? I don't think so. Uh, young girls just have no idea of the dangers associated with this particular type of surgery. So you were opposed to her having liposuction? Um, I, I, I was. Um, and I said, oh, darling, please don't do that. Please. People actually, you know, die from this, not knowing what those words really meant. It was a Friday morning, three years ago. Lauren went to this clinic in Melbourne to have liposuction on her thighs, a half-day procedure that cost her $8,000 and so much more. What followed her discharge was a weekend of intense pain and bleeding, with no explanation from her doctors. She just wanted to get rid of the pain. She wanted to know why she was still bleeding. She wanted to know why the blistering had become worse. She just wanted some answers and so did I. The slogan at Lauren's clinic was sometimes Mother Nature could do a better job. A bit rich coming from the doctors who completely neglected Lauren following her surgery. As her pain increased over that weekend, they failed to return numerous phone calls asking for help. They never investigated the cause of Lauren's pain and they took a wait and see approach that ended with her death on Sunday night. When you saw Lauren lying in the hallway there, face down. Did you think she would die there? No. No, it just it didn't seem real. It didn't. It certainly wasn't. It was the furthest thing from my mind. 
you can't believe the feeling. It was just unbelievable that that, that could have happened. Uh, and uh, that was very difficult. You were warning about deaths from liposuction 10 years ago. Is that the case? That's right. You can be a, a GP who goes to a weekend course in liposuction and then advertise yourself and do it. There is nothing to stop you. Professor Marilyn Walton conducted a major inquiry into cosmetic surgery. What she found was the booming industry in Australia is one of the least regulated in the world. The problem with cosmetic surgery are the words we use. I mean, if you look at the magazines, they talk about tummy tuck um, and people talk about it. They say, I'm having a facelift, as if somehow that's a simple thing. You just lift the face. But that involves cutting the skin, removing tissue, cells, reconstructing faces. And within that, with all of those procedures bring a serious risk of infection. At 35, after having five children, Kerry Mullins thought cosmetic surgery was the quick fix she needed to get her body back in shape. I didn't want to ever be a supermodel or completely change the way I was. <laughs> Just to feel like a woman again, you know, like a, a, a normal woman again. That's all I wanted. Kerry went to see plastic surgeon Morris Ritz here at the Melbourne Institute of Plastic Surgery. She wanted a breast lift and tummy tuck. He sold her what is known in the industry as a mum's makeover, a $25,000 package which included a breast lift, extensive liposuction and a tummy tuck, a three-in-one operation which took eight hours to complete and nearly cost Kerry her life. I just remember closing my eyes and then the next time I woke up, I woke up to a nurse holding my breast and prodding me. And um, Mr. Ritz then came in and he was stabbing my um, nipple with a needle to try and get it to, sorry, did I stop for a minute? A massive infection was ravaging Kerry's body and she was rushed into emergency hospital care. I was in there for three months and each, every other day they'd take me down to theatre so I had 22 operations all up and every second day they would cut it away, cut it away, cut it away until eventually it was just a big hole in my chest. How were you coping mentally? Um, all I kept thinking was I just want to live. <laughs> there was a couple of times I didn't want to wake up, I was in so much pain. And I just looked so disfigured that I didn't want to wake up. So you're prepared to show us what, what has happened to you? Four yeah. years on, a brave Kerry wants the world to see what was done to her. That's um, my right breast. Yeah. And that's my left breast. And they're the scars that I'm left with. Yeah. This is not easy for you, is no, it? No, it isn't. It isn't. But I just want women to be aware that if they're going to consider having plastic surgery, that they look and have a look at me and see what the outcome can be. You know, and this is what you could end up looking like. Did you do that too for me? Oh, thank you. Yeah, and chills. Did you? Chills. <laughs> That's lovely. How do you feel about your body today? Um, Clean them out for me. Um like a freak. Oh, I'm disgusted and even when I wash myself I, I feel disgusting that I have to even wash the area and touch the area. Do you think you'll ever lose that feeling? No, never. Never ever. The whole way cosmetic surgery is geared is towards maximising the benefits so to uh, encourage people to come and have it because the risks are minimal and I think it's really got nothing to do with the Hippocratic Oath, for example, of do no harm. So to me, it's an industry that has developed in healthcare, which has nothing to do with healthcare. Just read a couple lines. Our friendship like the still waters in the sand without. Lauren James is dead today because of a massive infection, because the doctors she put her trust in failed to look after her properly. 
A recent coroner's inquest into Lauren's death found the clinic failed in its obligation to provide adequate post-operative care. In particular, Lauren's surgeon, Dr Tam Dew, was criticised for disturbing behaviour. All the expert witnesses said Lauren's death was preventable if she'd been treated, even up until an hour before she died at 10 o'clock that Sunday night. To hear those words that your daughter's death was preventable if the clinic had done the right thing, what was that like? Well, uh, this, you just, it, it, it's, it's a feeling that of emptiness. They had so many opportunities to save her life. And I think the hardest thing for me was to hear this stated over and over again. The coroner has referred Lauren's case to the Australian Health Practitioners Regulation Agency, and her boyfriend Simon is now suing the clinic. Somebody needs to be responsible for what happened. I just want to get some answers. But are there any answers that will satisfy you? No. No. No, nothing will... Nothing will change, change what happened that night. Nothing will take away the pain that I feel every day. <clears throat> and nothing will bring Lauren back. Well, they clearly love you. They do very much, and we're very, very close. Kerry yeah, Mullins close. says her kids so won't let her have reconstructive surgery. They're too scared of what might happen to their mum. As for her doctor, she may have settled out of court with him, but that doesn't stop Kerry warning others that cosmetic surgery can be the ugliest cut of all. I'm more fortunate than Lauren. Lauren didn't survive to tell her story. I did. You know, these are the outcomes, and this is what can happen. And my life's ruined because of it. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.